Imagine for a second, you're fighting back against the occupying forces of the AFRF or NATO, working to liberate this land. It's a slow grind, and you start to wonder, are anti stasis AI actually useful? Could they make my rebellion easier? I've asked myself the same question, and you're about to find out. Unlike typical rebellions, I'm going to liberate Tanoi using only AI recruited from the commander menu, without firing a shot, from liberating towns and bombing outposts, to attacking airbase and holding off the enemy forces. This video will have it all. Our journey begins with our first objective, liberating the nearby towns and obtaining better weapons and armor in the process. We'll be relying entirely on AI squads to do this. To begin with, we'll prepare 10 teams of 4 AI with the goal of taking on the MP forces in 3 different towns. Watching our forces advance in the spectator tool, the MP forces engage our AI. After successfully taking out the last of the MPs with that rocket, our forces advanced into the town securing it. The attack continued as I ordered the squads to attack the other two towns, as I gathered all the gear I could. Moving our AI from town to town, we took out the military police forces in each of the towns, gathered what loot we could, saved and relogged in order to repeat this process. If I had just chosen a better starting area, this probably wouldn't have been necessary, but in order to get the MPs to respawn, we needed to unload the area. Now this was a slow process, and it would take them ages to kill all the MPs in the area because of how inaccurate the AI were. What was that shot? What do you even mean? How? The attacks on the town eventually paid off when we converted the first town to the cause. The liberation of the local towns continued as our forces made their impact felt, moving from town to town, attacking and converting as they went, converting a second and a third town to the cause. Next, launching a two-prong parallel attack on a factory and a roadblock, the first armoured vehicle of this playthrough was secured. At this point, we had actually unlocked AKs for our units, which made them more lethal as we focused all the forces on attacking in the factory, and allowed us to secure it in no time at all. Okay, just grab the flag, and then I think then we can take one more town and the outpost. Cool. Making good progress. More towns were liberated and began to support the cause, which increased the war level to 3, bringing a weapons dealer to the area. This guy would be super important to liberating the lands with just AI, but I was only allowing myself to utilize his garage feature, giving access to BRDMs and BTRs, and later on, APCs, anti-airs, and even tanks. With a factory, arms dealer, and multiple towns already on our side, I began the attack on the outpost, the last sign of occupation on this island. Moving all our squads into place, targeting enemy forces and advancing our own, we were able to take out most of the defence when the last of the defending forces surrendered and we secured the island. After relocating our HQ to another island, and having to deal with, well, AI being AI, our territorial expansion continued. Taking out a roadblock, we moved on the seaport and the military admin of Katakula. Our newly obtained BRDMs and BTRs made quick work of the military forces holed up within the city. Reinforcements were sent to help repel the attack on the seaport, but disabling the heli and defeating the squad, our infantry slowly moved up through the streets, taking out more and more of the defence. The AI secured the military admin, and so we redirected their focus on the seaport, and was able to secure it and the city in no time at all. While preparing for the attack on an outpost in the area, we were engaged by a roadblock, losing the element of surprise and disorientating our AI. Luckily, at this point, we had already reached War Level 4, gaining access to more powerful tools.
we advanced our BRDMs and infantry as the anti-air obliterated all that stood in its wake. Taking care of most of the ground forces and allowing us to secure the outpost as I got distracted by a jet who I was quite enjoying watching until he dropped a bomb on us. Moving our freshly recruited squads into position, the attack on the second outpost on the island began, being one of the most difficult outposts to take. Located on top of a mountain, BRDMs and BTRs would not be able to roll up knocking on the front door. Instead, for this attack, relying primarily on infantry, the attack began. The HMGs taking out all the enemy squads on one side of the outpost and our infantry moving in from the other. The defence didn't stand a chance, and were made quick work of. Securing the outpost, we turned our sights on the last stronghold in the area, the airbase. Moving all our AI into position, the attack began. With anti-airs and a BPM part of the defence of the airbase, this would be a long, hard-fought battle. The 30mm cannons of the anti-air dealing heavy damage to our BTR and BRDMs as a plane flew over, dropping, dropping off reinforcements, the attack took a turn for the worse. Recruiting reinforcements and awaiting their arrival, the attack continued. Luckily for us, we could just throw wave after wave after wave of AI at them. Once again surrounding the enemy on all sides, the BTRs and infantry attacking from both sides, we finally aggroed the BMP. Using Zeus, I combined different units in close proximity to be able to recruit some 80 squads, which was kind of successful, but I missed it. And then... After giving all the units new targets, our forces moved in and eventually were able to move in and take out their BMP, eliminating the last of the defense, securing our first airbase. After taking the airbase, while teleporting myself out of it, so I don't become the target of the counterattack, the AI took out a helicopter, which I missed. So, sorry about that. Taking out the last of the counterattacking forces with units recruited to help defend the airbase from future attacks, we had secured the second island.